Namaste. I'm Christian Sager, and welcome to Brain Stuff. As human beings, none of us are strangers to being part of a community. We all have the psychological need to feel safe, respected, and wanted. So we form social relations with other people, usually based on our values and beliefs. It used to be that our communities were always based on our physical proximity to one another. Now, with the growth of mass media, you can find communities of people separated by vast distances who build social structures based on their common interests and similar content. When it comes down to it, almost everyone's a fan of something, right? So then, how does fandom work? Who runs these communities and what makes them different from my neighborhood book club? For the answers to these questions, there's one man to turn to. Henry Jenkins has been studying fandom for decades, first at MIT and now at the University of Southern California. Jenkins' first point about fandom is something we've already touched on, that it constitutes a kind of alternative social community for people. You can apply this to brain stuff in the community built around our videos and social media. Every day I see people contributing something new to our explanations of the everyday world. Often, you are helping us all learn more by sharing your personal experience or knowledge about the topics that we cover. And Jenkins says that fans have a very distinct way of receiving the content that they adore, usually with undivided attention. You know that one television show you watch where you won't pick up the phone or answer the door when it's on? That's what he's talking about. And fans aren't just faithful consumers. They also want to talk about it with other fans as it's happening. Here at BrainStuff, we've got viewers who will watch and comment on a video in the first 10 minutes after it goes live. You know the people who write first or under 301 in the comments? That's what Jenkins means when he says fans receive content differently than everyone else. Fans can be some of the strongest critics if they're disappointed in their object of fandom. Don't believe me? Check out how many people said our Twins episode wasn't funny. I wrote that one, by the way. Or the conversations about whether Lauren uses a teleprompter or not. It's true, she's just really awkward, naturally. Now, personally, we love it when fans get engaged like this. It usually means that you care enough about what we're doing that you want to make sure it's done well. Finally, in Jenkins' model, fandom actually constitutes its very own world of art, with a functioning market and awards evaluating their aesthetics. Fans create everything. Videos, poems, paintings, sculptures, songs, short stories, podcasts, you name it. But here's the thing. The corporations that own those brands don't usually like it when someone else starts making money off their intellectual property. And then you get into all kinds of arguments about copyright and whether fan art falls under transformative fair usage. But don't worry, Ben and I know about the slash fiction you're posting about us, and we're not going to sue anybody. In fact, maybe one day you could write an episode of Brain Stuff for us. Because that is another important thing about fan art. It's often a training ground for up and coming creators. Consider this, Peter Capaldi, the guy who is now playing Doctor Who, used to write letters to the creators of the show when he was only 15 years old. Now he's the star of the show, playing the character he loved so much growing up. And this is why foundations and media companies are following Henry Jenkins' research so closely. Because fandom's influence on the media is growing considerably. Back at the turn of the 20th century, it was fans writing letters to Arthur Conan Doyle that motivated him to return to writing Sherlock Holmes. Today, movies like Veronica Mars and Serenity are being produced because of fan campaigns. When the market shifted from satellite to cable television, fans were targeted by networks as the ideal media consumers, especially when DVD box sets came out and binge-watching television series became common practice. Now, even after a show gets canceled, fans continue engagement with the product. So now that we all know a little bit more about how fandom works, what are you a fan of? I mean, besides brain stuff, of course. What's your fan community like, or do you make art for your fandom? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll try to engage with you there about it. And don't forget, every good fan subscribes to our channel so they know the minute we've posted a new episode.